Good morning. Happy Thursday. All right. So audio settings, I believe, are correct. We're going just barely into the yellow. Perfect. Not like last time where we were way too soft for half the stream. Uh, OK, so um, first off, I, I actually got a, a notification on Twitch, although it wasn't one of those like push notifications that I got. It was a little bit interesting. It was on my um, account. I don't have no idea. OK, here it is. Uh, I got a notification on the mobile uh, Twitch that uh, NXThor, Nixthor, uh, left a message um, on, uh, on saying, yeah, hint from the future, take half of the minimum of X and Y so it is independent of your cell size and ratio when building the grid and uh, placing them down. At least I believe that's where it was. That was on uh, for day 17, so two, two days ago, but not really days ago, two streams ago, which was actually last week. Um, it's it's kind of funny how like something like that is long enough ago that it makes it harder to remember what exactly I was working on. Uh, but looking at the the time of the video, it looked like I was trying to make it so that the grid was evenly all throughout, and we do have that now. So thank you, Nextdoor, for uh, for the comment. Um, I won't necessarily do that for all comments left afterwards, but I thought it was interesting that I did actually get a notification for uh, somebody leaving a comment uh, while watching the live the VOD um, through there. So that. That actually is something that can be seen. Uh, okay, so uh, where are we? Uh, last time uh, we had uploaded work in progress moving the bot on the grid. And if we take a look at our code, uh, we have our error here, which is move bot, uh, no method name move bot. So it looks like we changed that. So the game grid. Uh, what do we have now? We've commented out move bot because now we have a check location for bot. Uh, because it looks like what we were doing was figuring out the plan. So is there a bot in the new location? And then, so if there is a bot new location, then we want to uh, put, like insert a bot at the new location. So insert um, bot into new location. And then finally, then we were going to want to um, probably delete, so remove bot from old location. So if we end up doing this, then that, that's kind of what a move is. We need to check to make sure we can move. If we can move, uh, then put Put a bot right there and then remove the bot from the old location okay so that's that's fine for that now the reason why it's there there's the other there's the other thing which is uh, i might be able to do this all in sort of one go and that's dependent upon how hash maps work so currently my hash map is i have the location as the key and the piece as the the value i would only need to change the key but not the value and so I am actually curious if there's any methods on hash maps that will allow me to do that. So let's go to rustlang hash map um, documentation. So what I'm looking for is some kind of move or something else. Um, Juan, good morning. The Rust guy, yeah. And not so super frazzed, liked my uh, liked my tweet. Awesome. I don't I haven't looked into. I know there's um C sharp frit. Okay, so that's not the same person. Um, the F sort of trips me up sometimes. Okay, so what were we doing? We're looking to see if we can if there's a way in Rust to change the the key and not the value which i mean based upon other languages that i've used with like dictionaries or, or javascript objects i'm not really sure there i don't think there there would be 
but it it I mean it might be nice to sort of think about it. Okay, so that's just uh, iterating through keys. Retains only elements specified by the predicate. Okay, so I don't need to do anything like that. Okay, and then there's just traits. So no, hash maps don't have anything like that. Yeah, add a new key. That, that's what I sort of figured. So I'm gonna have to do a delete. So remove removes a key from the map, returning the value at the key if the key was previously in the map. Ooh, so that that might work. Um, JSON module. Well, I have I have um, a Verde JSON which converts a hash map to well, it converts many things to JSON. So hash maps are one of them. Okay, so the key may be bar a the key may be any borrowed form of the key map's key type, but hash and equal and a borrow must match those. So wait, if removes the key from the map, returning the value of the key if the key was previously in the map. So remove is gonna be some A. Okay, so it's gonna be an an option. That that actually makes sense. And in this case, I I bet that I can just um, because that would give me the option. I could then insert that into the hash map right away, which means that I can I can make this opposite. Remove the bot from the old location and then insert the bot because I would get the bot. I would get exactly what I need to insert as soon as I remove it. So that, that's what I'm going for. Now, is there a bot in new location? Let's see what we have. We have this um, check location for bot. Uh, this just is, so we're work in progress here. Uh, self grid get location. Uh, that's a, Oh, that's just returning it too. That's returning an option of a piece. And if we take a look at our test, um, check location for empty bot that's it's like we have a full test here for that now we have our test move bot to empty cell I'm not sure we need a move bot to empty cell here then it would just be a move bot um, also I don't think eventually I think we're gonna want to change this to just check location um on the grid because we're gonna get whatever it is there and not necessarily a bot but because we only have bots right now i'm okay with that but we should we should like look into that in the future um yeah i don't know if i want okay so we create a new game grid we have our new we have a, a first location a target location a bot index we place the bot, we then move the bot over, over there. Okay, and then we just check, check the location to make sure that we get a none. Okay, that makes sense. And I think the question is, do we want to name this move bot or not? And I kind of, I kind of don't think I want to. I think I wanted to call this. We only have a one, so move um, item on. So I guess I'll call it move piece. Move piece on grid. Copy you. Uncomment all of you, you recomment you, and paste you. Okay, so uh, this will be move the piece on the grid. We'll take uh, mutable self. We'll take so the bot index. Um, you know what? I don't think we're going to care about the bot index here. 
all we're really going to care about is the new location uh oh we need so what we're going to want to do is have the old location and the new location because if we have the old location then we'll just get the point from that uh, we could just remove so move piece on grid um yeah let's let's do this old or current location is a point and then we have the new location and then of course we're going to have a result which is we just did it or some kind of grid error uh, i am a cuttlefish uh, good morning uh, okay, so it's yelling at me because I'm not actually returning a result. I could do that really quickly. And that will that will make this error go away. And current so current location, new location, you are yelling at me. I'm not passing in the right things anymore. So this is gonna be bot index. We don't need that. We need the old location. So bot location. A uh, place bot is going to take ownership of that. So if I put bot location, it's going to yell at me. So I'm going to have to have cloned this here. And then it should be fine with that. Now you're upset because I gave ownership uh, of bot location here. So I'm going to have to clone again. Now normally I wouldn't have to clone except during the tests. I need these locations to, to verify. And then target location has to be cloned too. Okay, so now now we have those tests like working supposedly. Uh, I should actually be able to run the test. Cargo test. Perfect, so we have a, a failure. On the left, we had the sum, like the actual sum that we're getting, and we we're supposed to get none. So the bot didn't really move, and it wasn't where it was supposed to be. And it looks like it just quits after the first one because I had two asserts in there. All right, perfect. Then in that case, is there a bot in new location? So we can place the bot. So self dot not place self dot check location for bot, and we're going to hand it a reference to the new location. Now, check location for bot will return an option, and uh, so that means we want to do. We, I think, what is it? It's a, a let, uh, we can do an if let. Um, if let, oh man, I forgot the syntax for if let. Rust lang if let. I like how they show this as their unclean version and then this oh there's a whole bunch of them at for some reason I thought it was just like one like a giant if let okay so if if let some variable number equals and then the the variable that the option is coming from and then then inside the brackets the this variable will be in scope and I'll be able to do whatever I want with it so it's gonna be an if let's just start this over if let sum, and this is going to be the new location. So if if there is a bot in the lo new location, I kind of want a none, don't I? So I don't really care what's in there. Well, no, I don't care right now. But in the future, I'm going to have bullets in here. So it's going to be some piece. So if let some piece equals, and then it's it's whatever I get. So that's going to be the self dot check location for bot. We're going to hand it a reference to the new location. All 
So if if we have this this piece in here, um, it's either going to be a oh so this is going to be interesting. This is either going to be a um, like a, a bullet or something else. Now I can I think I don't think I can like do a full check inside of here for for that. So that's. Oh yeah, so I, I can't like inside of here say what part of the enum I want it to be. Uh, Miguel, good morning. Yeah, because that's that's a little bit too ingrained. In like other match statements, I could because like here's foo bar if. Oh, I can. Okay, so variable b does not match foo bar. Let me know if you can't read this text. Uh, it's a, it might be a little bit too small. Um, if that foo bar equals this, you can read awesome. Thank you. Okay. So, what are the pieces that I care about? Well, in piece, currently I only have bot index. So if it's a bot, I just want to return a grid error. So if let, um, I think it would be a piece bot index, um, I guess like index, expected enum standard option option. Wait, do I have to put that inside of a Oh, this so this is this is different. This is basically not an option. So there there's sums in here, but I can't really check to see that. I wonder if a match would be better then. Prob probably not right now. A bit small but readable. Okay, I'll I'll I could just immediately make that ooh too big, a little bit bigger. So I was hoping I could use this syntax, which is if let this, but because it's an option, I have to unwrap the option to get at the value because it could be either none or or something else. But the problem is that if um, I have pieces that are like not good and pieces that are good. Um, right now, I only have a piece that's not good. So if, if it's something there, then we want to do something. Otherwise, we want to, um, to do other things. I, I might want to... I'm thinking, actually, the... Yeah, it is interesting syntax, the if let. I'm thinking that I want to have the grid just sort of be, it's it's not going to, it's not gonna do the logic of making that decision. I think we're gonna make the library do that logic. So the library is going to check up here, the location for the bot. And then it can do all of the logic of saying, well, then, okay, you run this function if it's like this type of thing and run this function if it's this type of thing and keep track of state and, and other complexities. So I'm thinking the test here is just, it's gonna move move the bot in a grid. So this should just uh, move, move the piece. And that, that's it. Like we're not going to check to see if it's in the location we're just going to move it there if possible. And I guess that would delete the previous thing. So that's that's also interesting. Because I don't think I can insert if something else is there. Where's insert? Am I, oh, there it is. Inserts a key val value pair into the map. 
If the map did not have this key present, none is returned. If the map did have this key present, the value is updated and the old value is returned. The key is not updated, though this matters. The key is not updated, though. This matters for types that can be equal without being identical. Okay, I think I think that's fine. I think that's fine because it's just a point that has the same coordinates then. And it the, the hash map owns it so it can be found and everything else. So I, I think I think that would work. It, it does feel a little bit odd, but um, I, I think it'll work for what we need. So in this case, we're just going to do an insert straight into here. And, uh, and then, well, we kind of don't care about the result because we should have checked for the, we should have checked the location for whatever it was originally. So here we're going to say, okay, um, self.grid.insert, the key is going to be the new location, and the value, um, oh, well, I guess we can't do an insert yet. We need to get, we need to get the other one, so we need to remove first. Um, I guess this is going to be the, the option, right? So if let sum, and this is going to be a bot, or this is going to be like a piece, equals, and then it's going to be self.grid.remove, removes the key from the map, returning the value, but it's going to be an option. Remove, the key is going to be the current location. All right. So now we're going to have the piece of of where where we want to go. Expected reference. Okay, so you only need to be a reference, which means I might as well pass this as a reference in. And if you're a reference, do I Okay, so you need to be a reference now. Um, you no longer need to be cloned. You're going to be a reference. All right. Okay, so if let some piece remove, do I, well, I kind of like having this here to show that it really is a reference. Okay, so we now have the piece here. We're not using it right now. And this is going to be the value. So now we're going to insert into the new location the, the value. Okay, so, and that's going to result, well, let's find out. Uh, Self.grid.insert, that's gonna result in another option. So insert a key value pair into the map. If the map did not have this key present, none is returned if the map did. Okay, so we don't really care about the the result then. Um, it's either gonna give us none or if it's gonna give us something, but it's going to work regardless. So insert, the key is going to be the new location and the value is going to be the piece. And I think, is this gonna yell at me about not using the result? I don't think it is. Then I want to return, uh, oh, well, okay, it's either return or a grid error, and I don't actually really care about this. So, I kind of, can I not have, I don't have a grid error. Method is never used, move, P okay, so that's fine. I'm trying to think like, what kind of error can I do? I'm not gonna get an error from insert or remove. I guess what I could do is if there's no piece. So if there's, there's no piece, okay, so else, 
um, we want to return a grid error. So grid error. We have bot exists in location and bot out of bounds. Let's go take a look at error. I kind of wonder if I want to add another error in here, which would be something like um, uh, bot, like nothing exists. Like, yeah, the piece did not exist. Um, nothing, nothing there. Kind of want, does none make sense? Naming things is, <laughs> naming things is hard. Um, this error is going to be when there is nothing on the grid and I needed there to be something on the grid. So nothing um, in cell. Okay, so I'm gonna put that there and here we could do nothing in cell. And I wonder if I can then put you up here and we'll just say, okay, if we're, if we do this, this path, we return this. Okay. Otherwise we return this grid. Is that expected enum center? Oh, it's uh then I have to do an error like that. Um, I already checked if the new location isn't taken. So what we decided to do was uh, a lot, the grid is, is not really going to care about any of that. What's going to happen is the library is going to be in charge of actually running, like running the checks to make sure that it, it should be able to move there. And then if it can, then move, move there. Uh, the grid will just sort of say like, oh, you want to move there? Fine. There you go. But it has um, it has functions to find out what really is there. So, kind of, sort of, uh, mainly because it was going to overcomplicate some of this logic here on the uh, the move piece on grid, and I wanted the, I want this stuff to be a little bit more simple. And as, as I'm realizing, if I keep this all really simple, I can have uh, multiple sort of game modes a lot easier because I just sort of swap out how it's using the grid, but I don't have to change the grid itself. Wandable, thank you very much for the host. Um, all right, so then we have move bot to empty cell. This should work now. Let's go ahead and run our tests. Uh, no, okay. So uh, pattern error, nothing in cell is not covered. This is, oh, because I added that error, now I have to cover nothing in cell in LiveRS 109. So on 109, we have our update, we have our place bot here, and this is our match. And this is where it's getting a little bit, okay, we have grid error, bot exists in location, grid error out of bounds. And then we have grid error, uh, sort of nothing is there. I, I almost feel After this, we have, we don't really care. Can I, can I just do that? Um, oh, what, what is it? Is it, it can't be nothing. Uh, Juan, ha uh, have a great day. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Okay, I guess I just do this. It's an empty statement. I don't really care what's happening here. Because um, all, all I'm checking for is grid error if the bot exists in the location when I place the bot 
or if it's out of bounds, but there can't be, yeah, bot exists in location. I'm not getting that. Okay, so that should solve that problem. Let's see. No more red. To run test again. All right, so uh, test passed. Let's go ahead and actually use this thing. So we have two new functions to play with here. We have oh, this library. We have uh, move the piece on the grid and check location for bot. So in the library, in update, uh, we have that if the turn number is zero, we're going to initially place the bot. And we have that working. We were able to see that in the last stream. Um, if it's not turn number zero, so this will be an else, then it's going to be turn number one or two or, or whatever. And at this point, the bots are going to say, I want to move in, in this X direction. So it's going to have a new location for us. And we have this new location right here. We also have the old location because that's what's on the bot itself. So we need to check to see if there is a bot in a new location. And if there is, the bot doesn't get to move. That, that's it. Otherwise, um, move the bot over into that location. So I guess this is going to be similar to, this is going to be an, uh, an option that returns a reference to a piece. Right, the piece on the, on the, the grid. So I think this will be an if let again. So if let, uh, this is going to be some piece. And then we're going to call self.grid. Uh, check location for bot. And we're going to hand it a reference to the new location. New location. All right, so. Okay, so we're going to have a piece potentially here. What are you upset about? Expect, oh, I uh, equals. Uh, method, oh, you need to be public. All right, so now we're just not using the piece. Um, okay, so if the piece is a bot, and I don't really care what index it is, but if, if there's a bot in this new, new location, then I really don't want, I, I can't move the bot to be there. If we've got a none, or if this piece is not a bot, then we, we actually just move the piece there. I kind of, because there, there's two, there's, well, I guess right now we can only have bots on there, but eventually we're gonna have bullets and other things. And then those other things, we can move them in there. Can I, and this is where I would love to be able to see something like this. If let some piece, um, and say something like bot index, but that would make it very, very unhappy. It just, it won't let me do that. I can't do an unwrap because I'm getting a none if there's nothing there. Okay, so if let some piece, well right now it can only be a bot, so 
if if we're in there. Now I guess I could do a match on this. And if it's a if it's a bot index, we don't do anything at all. Every other situation re results in doing something. And I kind of feel that this will be an else here. I kind of feel like in here, we're going to then tell it, go ahead and move the bot. I'm thinking I want to like now actually have a, a method to do that, or I could just call it. So if I have a match, um, it's only one case right now, I could just do an if. So if a piece, oh wait, I can do another if let, right? If let piece bot index. of, um, I don't really care about that. Then I want to just do nothing at all. I guess in here, I just want to, if it's currently a piece, I'll just print line. So print line, bot attempted to move into another bot. I'm thinking that when I eventually get to the, to like the actual sending the game information to the front end, uh, I'm gonna replace these print lines with a call to another function that's basically going to keep a record of the entire game state. And we're gonna send those sort of line by line or turn by turn to a database. And then that way, by the end of the game, we can just turn that into a gigantic JSON object and send that on up. So we can just say, here is what happened in the game. And it'll be just an array of, of essentially update objects. Okay, so bot attempted to move into another bot. And we, we kind of want the index for this, which we have up here the bot index, so bot, I want you to then be, uh, what is it, bot dot index, like that, uh, currently we're not really caring about what we get in here, so I guess this is a piece, and then We'll, we'll use this at a later time. In the else here, so it's a none, there is nothing there. We can now say um, self dot, uh, self dot grid or game grid dot move piece on grid. Uh, we have the current location, so that's going to be well, I guess the, uh, the, the bot location. So bot dot location. Was that a reference? I think that's a reference. Yeah, that's gonna be a reference to that. And then the new location is not a reference. So you're going to be just new location. And I don't really care what happens with the result here, or do I? Uh, unused result that must be used. Uh, what can this be? The grid error can be nothing in the cell, right, okay. So the error that can I have here is that there's nothing in a cell that I'm attempting to move from. So how do I want to handle that error? Probably, probably another sort of print statement of, uh, well, if, if this happens, I do want to crash, don't I? So I think I can just, um, it's a game result. I don't think I can do this because it's not the same type of error. Yeah. Dot, um, unwrap
and then we do want it to, to crash right now because we want uh, if we're if we're trying to move bots that don't exist anymore, we need to know that in the game, uh, so that way we can go and, and fix that logic. All right, so this should hopefully move the bots around, and I would want to make sure the tests are still running, and then we could run the code and see what happens. Okay, so tests are going good for that. Cargo run. Okay, so uh, we actually ran into the error, nothing in cell. It looks like we did, so the bot moved one cell and then, then the next move. So we had uh, turn zero, we placed the bot, turn one, we, um, we moved the bot, and turn two, we crashed because we attempted, we, we didn't update where we were. So we have the new location for the bot. I believe that in the bot now, we're not actually updating the location that it knows of. Uh, so in run bot, yeah, we, we, we return the, load of the location, but we don't update that. So now in the library, this, is, this job is to do that. So self game grid, move piece, we unwrap, and then we also want to say, uh, bot dot location is now going to be equal to new location. This of course won't work because we've moved it away, so we need to clone this here. All right, let's see if now we're able to run. Hey, and we have a bot that's ran, oh, it randomly moved until it moved off the screen. Um, okay, so what, what happened here? Uh, oh, thread main panicked at call result unwrap on error, invalid in, uh, value integer negative one. So because I'm using U16s, they're unsigned integers, they can't move off the screen. But this is, uh, this is a, a nice enough thing that we can, we can sort of send this on up, which is, um, moving bots on the grid. And I can send that on up. Now, of course, the problem is that uh, it when it moves off the grid, it needs to die. <laughs> and when it dies, we need to remove it from the, we need to remove it from the array or mark it as dead and then not, not update it anymore. Now, currently, I have a problem here. Um, actually, do I have a problem? When I'm, am I actually ever grabbing the bot directly from the index? I don't know if I am. So I, I have the I have the bots just in in a vector. Oh, I so if I was to go and remove the bot. Um, via the vector, I would either be able to say, hey, I have the index, let me remove that. That would only move for the first bot. The second bot would now have the wrong index, and so therefore would not, would not work properly. I could search through the vector, um, find the bot with the appropriate index that no longer matches, the name doesn't work anymore, and then sort of get that position and then remove it, or I can have a state on the bot in here called like um, is alive or or is alive and that it would be a boolean I think that would make sense so we need to keep the bot needs to be able to be alive so we need the bot to be able to be alive um, we need also in the grid to check so when we move the piece on the grid before we before we move in the library here, we also are going to want to check to see are we moving out of bounds. So if we're at, um, and we have we have this location, 
the the new location is because it's a U16 and it's coming in as um it's coming in as a a negative number that is not going to work for us. So I wonder if it'd be even better in our in our bod. So I mean I could use eyes, but I would probably have to like drop down from a U16 to an I something else and like that that feel like that that would not be fun to have to change all all of that stuff. But I don't like I wouldn't want to necessarily have to choose that. What if instead of just passing the location of where I want to be, when I first um when I first choose a random location, I would say this is the grid, this is the the exact grid I want to do it. But after that, I I don't send a location in. I send a, a movement command in. So I want to move up, right, down, or left, which would of course be, if I want to move up, that's just Y minus one. And then in the library, I can check, say, oh, I want to move, you know, it's the string up. So therefore, let's, uh, let's check to see if I can, if I'm at, like the first row, I just kill the bot at that point. So this won't move randomly. We can do this uh, um, inside of here. We can now have a maybe const before that. This would be a const um, directions equals. This is going to be an array of up. Um, right, uh, down, left. So if I have that directions, now I want to have a random direction. So random, um, random direction, I guess this is, yeah, random direction index. Okay, so now it's going to be a little bit more interesting. Our math at random begins with zero, uh, one, 0 through 1 as a floating point number. I want to scale it up by the length of directions. So this is going to be directions.length. And so now I have a number that's between 0 and uh, 4. And then I want to floor that because I don't want actually four, I want three, because zero, one, two, three. So then on here I do math.floor and do that. It also solve bots trying to cheat the system by moving more than a maximum allowed movement distance. Right, because now it's, hey, I yeah, I, I'm totally over there, and it's like a completely different side of the map. Um, and then that, that would be like teleporting. Um, I mean, I guess that would be interesting to have a teleport mechanic in there, but uh, if I did have a teleport mechanic, what I think would happen would be, hey, put in the directions you wanna do and you're allowed to teleport 10 squares. So you're allowed to put in 10, uh, 10 directions. And so you can do crazy things like, um, I want to teleport right, 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 up, down, right, right, down, down, right, or something like that. And at that point in time, I could say, oh, you have a teleport mechanic. Let's just loop through that and uh, see where you end up, and then if you may be dead. <laughs> Which would be interesting, because if you're at the edge of the screen and you try to teleport off the edge over to the right and then back down, back over again, it wouldn't work. So maybe not teleport, it would be super speed. That's what we would call it, super speed. Because you have to move through those spots and they have to be available to you. Um, mainly because I don't want to have, be able to have you, I don't want to have to like allow you to move through it. Maybe, we'll, we'll, we'll see. All right, um, okay, so now we have a random direction index we don't need any of this logic anymore. We now just need to, we need to figure out what our return is going to be. 
currently we're turning this sort of just a JSON stringify of a location. I don't, I'm not gonna need that for like the, the first turn. Now I'm gonna need that to be um, the, the direction. So this is gonna have to change our, our console log. And I only want one of these. So we're gonna have, instead of a location, we have game input and this is being changed and manipulated. So I kind of want now is to have a const, this could be const too, can't it? Because location is an object. Uh, I'm gonna want a const, a sort of the output, um, the command. So command, equals and it's going to be an empty object to begin with now of course if we're choosing a random direction so if turn number is zero we want to set a command dot location um, equals and essentially we're going to have an, an x and y then we Choose the random location, and this is now going to be a command dot location that we pass in to here. Except that's not really going to work, is it? Hmm. I guess we could pass the command in, and then it's going to manipulate the command here. So in choose random location, this is going to become the command, and this becomes the command dot location. We set this. Now, otherwise, we have move randomly. So we're gonna have the command that we're passing in along with the board. Uh, now, we're not using the board for right now. We'll, uh, we'll probably change that in a very short future when we don't want our bot to just randomly die. But uh, here, we're gonna have command. We have our random directions, and so now we can say command dot um, sort of like move direction, I guess, like move direction like that. Uh, I think I want to match. So command dot move direction is now going to be equal to directions of random direction index. So that will set that the command will now be different depending upon what what I'm doing. Okay, I think I've got that set up uh, correctly. So now this is not going to be the location anymore. This is going to be the command. Now that's going to change it a little bit in our target because our command is now going to look like command to locate. Yeah, so. I guess previously it had like X and Y, and now it's going to have uh, like a location um, key on it, and then another hash. So I'm not actually I'm actually kind of curious about what how is it the mod is it it's the bot isn't it in the bot here? Also, we don't need context. That's been yelling at us for a while. In update, we serialize save for the bot. We run the bot. And we unwrap and we get this back. And this is an update. So we're getting Okay, so in run bot, we're getting the output from this. It's a new location, which is going to be a point. So this is no longer going to, to work with this. Then we have serde, json, from slice, and the result standard out. 
So this is now going to be sort of like the turn, um, like the turn object. I think, and we're running up on the end of time. I'm thinking that having the object mutate and be completely different is a terrible idea. I don't think that it should be something like, well, I mean, right now it's going to have command with a location or this other thing. I'm kind of wondering if I should hand back uh, exactly the same, the same shape of everything every single time. Um, which kind of makes me wonder, should I put in, should I hand in command to the input? So from game input, essentially I would get the command here. The command would look like um, this. We'd have uh, location. We already have location on the game input. In fact, I don't even know why I have that right there like that. Am I even using location? No. This is completely unnecessary. So I could have location and then a command. I'm thinking the command should be, we then have um, move direction, which then would be the direction. And then we also have the, uh, like a place the bot in a location. All right. I'm I'm gonna have to think about this. Uh, luckily, I don't have a, uh, a planned stream until Tuesday, so it's gonna give me a while to sort of think about this and try to figure out exactly what I want to do with it. But I am sort of leaning towards um, having the command be where where it puts it. But if um, if you watch this and you have any any thoughts. Uh, or if you on the stream have any thoughts, uh, let me know. Um, if it's after the stream, obviously you could leave a comment um, either on the YouTube video or apparently in this uh, in the VOD or on um, on Twitter. Could you maybe explain the current problem obstacle? Um, yes, absolutely. So it's not necessarily a, a, a problem yet, but it will become a problem shortly. So right now in the library. I'm getting the new location when I when I run the update to the bot. However, I am very shortly going to have two completely different type of objects come back. Uh, right now, it's it's an actual x y coordinate location, so it's a point that I'm getting when I run the bot update. But uh, if it's not turn zero, I don't want a point back. I want a string back. That's like where where I want to go with that. So we run into now a problem. If it's turn zero, I get one type, uh, one sort of shape of an object back. And if it's ter um, turn anything but zero, I get a string back. I don't really think that's a good idea. Mainly because there's gonna be a ton of logic that I have to check for here. But if I have an enum or a structure, that uh, that I can create and spin up and inside of the bot where I run the bot instead of just getting a location point I get whatever that structure is so it could be something like um, they would potentially have to be options I would have to have a function that um, that sort of like creates that and and sort of like takes the data in and, and constructs that object uh, or enums it's like you can do one of the following moves. Um, could you let the server decide where to place the bot? Absolutely. I could let the server decide to place the bot in a random location. Um, several enum structures or a structure of enums. Um, it also is going to come down to how many actions are you allowed to do on a turn. And I'm kind of thinking that eventually I'm going to get to two actions per turn, a move action and a fire action, if you have a bullet. Uh, and if I want to handle that, 
it sounds like I would want a structure where I can say, okay, are you, um, what's your move action? And then the, the main reason I was thinking of allowing the user to place their own bot was I kind of, I kind of felt that there was a, um, oh, what was it? I was kind of feeling that there were, there's a strategy to choosing where you want to be. Um, but I can totally see that that, depending upon where you are in, in the placement, because it's going to be, um, it's going to be random. It's going to be random where you are in the turn order. And so if you're last in turn order, if you're randomly placed, it's not quite as, well, see, I don't know if it's going to be unfair or not. When, when you're at the beginning of the turn, you can choose where you want to be. And the, the auto balancing mechanic, if we don't, we don't know if it really is a good balance or not, would allow you to choose later on exactly if you want to be next to all the other people that have chosen where they wanted to be, but you don't get you like a full choice, but at least you can choose which, like, you know, if you want to be a clump of bots or not. Or it's just random and then good luck. Um, so that's, it's a, um, it's an unknown here. Uh, I have to, I have to think about whether, whether or not I want that. The easiest thing to do would be just not have a difference. Like uh, turn zero, everybody's placed it down and all you get to do is the move options and then it'll be very easy. It'll be very easy at that point in time. So that's, that's, that's where I'm going with that. But with that all done, what did I change here? I just changed that. That's all. Uh, that's fine. Save you. Choose start location. There are, ah, yes. Lots of things changed in, inside of here. I don't necessarily, I'm going to revert this because I don't necessarily want to commit to one direction or the other here. So I'm just going to make that fix with the bot, which is not using context. Uh, so I removed it. We're going to send that on up. Let's take a look at a readme and see how far we got. Okay, so we had set a bot to random uh, to move randomly after the initial turn. X. We did that. When creating a bot, pass in the bot location enum. Um, when creating a bot, pass in the bot location enum. Am I doing that? And what what did I mean by that? So when you're creating a bot, bot location is a point, not an enum. So I don't think I'm doing that. Um, and I don't know if I really need this. Because I just have the, the location. That, that's all. So I, I think I can remove this. Make the first turn in bot really random. Um, we didn't do that. And we're not even sure we want to do that. Increment turns, so not always turn zero. Uh, yes, we did that. Uh, refactor vector of bots to be a hash map with ID as key and bot as the value. Okay, so we haven't done that, and that's a really good thing to do. And we also want to potentially now for the next turn is say um, change uh, I kind of, yeah, I, I decide, so decide um, if first turn um, has bots randomly placed or in a, um, or get to choose. And then the next thing is going to be a refactor bot to use um, move strings up, left, uh, etc. Uh, on 
subsequent turns. All right, I think I think that's it. So we'll push this on up. This is um, plan for future. And that's going up here. Let's go ahead and get this link. Uh, in case you want to go take out take a look at the code, here is a link to the bot and where it is. And I am um, I'm it's after uh, 7:30, so I've got to go get ready for the rest of my day. And uh, and I hope that you all have a great rest of your day. I'll see you on uh, Tuesday morning is the next uh, planned stream. Um, uh, until then, uh, take a look at uh, my Twitter or YouTube for any other sort of like, in case I do any other streams, I would always uh, put one there. So with that, have a great day and uh, I'll see you next time.